Hello crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating a wall decor piece inspired by an item that I saw online for $149. Now when I saw this piece, the first element that caught my eye was the ironwork design and I knew that it would provide the perfect challenge for me to recreate using items from the Dollar Tree and low cost items from my local home improvement store. Now for your convenience, I've provided the list of supplies and tools that I use to make this project in the description box below. Now I am so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I have to say hey hey and welcome back to my awesome subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into the project. Now here is my inspiration for this project today. Now I really love this design and there are so many ways that you can customize and style it to fit your particular taste. Now the $149 cost was a bit off-putting, but I knew that with a few cuts of wood and some Dollar Tree supplies, I would be able to recreate this look at a fraction of that retail cost. Now for this project, we are gonna need two of these one by two pieces of wood from the Home Depot. Now these come in lengths of eight feet and are very inexpensive at only $1.54 each. We're also going to need two packages of these 32 inch skewers and these are from the Dollar Tree. Now if you can't find them at the Dollar Tree, they're also sold at Walmart under the Ozark Trail brand and they're only 88 cents a pack. Now we're going to start by having our wood cut and we're going to cut four pieces at 32 inches and we're also going to cut four pieces at nine inches. Now I cut my pieces with straight ends so they butt together as shown here. Now if you prefer to have your pieces at miter corners at 45 degrees as shown here, you can do that as well if you have a miter saw or a miter box. Now if you do decide to go this method, still cut the long pieces at 32 inches but your short pieces need to be 12 inches. Now we're going to start by staining our pieces and in order to match my inspiration i'm going to be using some early american stain now what you want to do is to stain the side the top and um, you want to make sure you apply a nice a good coat to both sides and the top of your pieces now you don't want to stain the ends of your shorter pieces because those would be bonded to the other wood pieces now once those are all stained, you want to go forward and stain all your longer pieces. Again, staining the sides and the top. And also you do want to stain the ends of these pieces because they will be showing in this project if you decide to do the square straight corners. Now once they're all stained, set them out to dry for a few hours. Now while those dry, we're going to work on our skewer pieces, so I opened both packages here. Now what I'm going to do is I like to have a double skewer for thickness, so in order to bond them together, I'm just going to take two and I'm going to run some glue right down the seam of two of the skewers. Now to hold this in place while they're gluing, I'm just going to use some of these Dollar Tree clips that I got from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and I'm going to apply a line of glue and clip it all the way down. Now once it's all glued and it's all in place, it only takes about 10 seconds to glue so you can remove those clips and then move on to the next one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do eight sets of these two pack skewers. Now we want to have eight sets of these. Now I will be painting these with some black acrylic paint, but go ahead and grab six single skewers as well because we'll be using those in our project. So you just want to apply that black acrylic paint along the unglued side of the skewer and along the sides. Now once that nice good single or double coat is done, you just want to lay it out on, your, on an elevated piece of paper and then continue that for the remainder of your double skewers. Now once your double skewers are all painted, you want to paint your single skewers as well on all sides. You want to lay those out as well and let those sit to completely dry. 
So by this time, your wood should be nice and dry. So we're gonna separate two shorter pieces and two longer pieces. Now we're just gonna lay out the two longer pieces horizontally, and we're gonna nestle that shorter piece in between each end. Now in order to temporarily bond these, I am gonna use my wood stick hot glue for this. Now you can also use wood glue if you like, but just keep in mind, it does take a few hours for wood glue to glue. So I'm using my wood stick hot glue to glue the shorter pieces at each end because it's quick and easy and we will be screwing these in later. So there's no need to worry about the stability of the frame. Now once both of those short pieces are bonded to the end pieces. Just go ahead and flip it around. And now we can add that other long piece to the other side of our short pieces and this will create our frame. Just add some more of that Sure Bonder wood stick hot glue to the end and just press it into place on both sides. And remember, just wipe away any of that hot glue that oozes out of the seams. Now I did mention I'll be screwing these together, so I will be using some two inch wood screws for this. Now this screw box was put together by myself by individual packages, and I got the box from Walmart from the fishing section, just in case you wanted to know. Now before I add my screws, I always love to drill pilot holes and this will create um, a method for, to apply your screw so your wood does not split and you want to apply a pilot hole in each of the four corners. And once that pilot hole is drilled, just go ahead and start hand threading that screw into place and then take your drill to drill it all the way down into the side. Now you do want to repeat this for all four corners as well. Now, once all your screws are in place, you can go in and dab some acrylic paint um, on top of them to match the wood grain if you like. So now that your frame is all sturdy and ready to go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding measurements. So we wanna flip it over to the back, grab your tape measure, and you wanna find the center of the back, which should be about 14 and a half inches. And then take that 14 and a half inches and divide it in half at seven and a quarter inches. And you want to do this on each side. Now this will identify where we're going to place the three double skewers that will lay across the center. And then I'm just going to follow up with a Sharpie to highlight my marks so I'll know their placement. And then just repeat this on the other side of the frame to make sure that they're nice and even on each side. Now you can also measure the center of the top and bottom as well, and you can use this as a guide when you add your centerpiece. Now this is completely optional so you, since you will not be adding an actual skewer to that mark, but you can use it as a visual guideline. Now once all your marks are made, go ahead and grab one of your double skewers and all you want to do is you want to lay it across your first two marks at the top and you want to cut a piece where it overlaps the ends about a quarter of an inch as shown here. Now once that piece is cut, go ahead and add a generous amount of that wood stick hot glue and press that skewer face down, good side down into place. And then you just want to repeat by cutting two more pieces to line up with the remaining two marks as shown here. Now you want to make sure that these are all nice and hot glued into place and then follow up with a staple gun and this is just for added security. Just add a few staples on the end of each one of those skewer pieces to make sure they are nice and secure. So now what you want to do is flip it over and you want to grab another one of those double skewers and you want to cut a piece to go across the center where it overlaps um, all three of those skewers by about a quarter of an inch on each end. Now you do want to lay this skewer right in the center. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and double check to make sure it is nice and centered between the two skewers. And then just add hot glue under the outside, middle, and end skewers. And while it's still warm, go ahead and remeasure again, just in case you need to make some slight adjustments. And now that center skewer is all into place. So now what you wanna do is take your single skewers and we're gonna add them as the interior outline of the frame. 
Now what we're gonna do is cut a piece to size to fit along that long edge. You wanna add a dot of hot glue on the top edge of each one of those center skewers and place one of those single skewers right on top along the edge of the inside of the frame. And then add a dot of hot glue in the corner at each end as well. No worries, we are gonna follow up with hot glue on the back to make sure they're super secure, but this is just to hold them in place while we are working. Now once that side is done, repeat that on the other side of the frame as well. Now once both of the long sides are done, take that second skewer um, and then we're going to cut that one to fit in the top edge of the bottom and we're just going to lay that on top of the two side skewers that we placed, placing hot glue on each side and pressing that into place as well. And once that's nice and secure, you want to repeat that for the bottom end as well. So now the entire inside of your frame is nice and outlined. So like I mentioned before, we are gonna add some double security to that outline. So all we're gonna do is run a bead of glue between that skewer and the frame and press it firmly to the side of the frame for about 10 seconds until it is nice and secure. We're gonna repeat this all the way around the frame. So now that interior outline is nice and firm and insecure. So now we're gonna work on our diamond shape on each one of the open ends. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna mark our measurements. We're gonna mark the center of each of the open squares. We're gonna mark the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna mark the center on the side. Now you can transfer that marking from the back too, if you like. So now that the centers of each side are marked, we can start applying our squares. So take one of those double skewers and we wanna line up the angle of the diamond with the top edge touching one mark and the bottom edge touching the center mark. Now, once we have that general piece, we're gonna cut it about an inch, uh, about a quarter of an inch longer than normal, and then make four pieces that long. That way we have room to play with in case we need to make adjustments. So now that we have our pieces, you just wanna cut them down to size, just trimming off as needed, apply hot glue on each one of those um, skewers on the trim and the middle, and press it into place at that angle. And for the next side, we're gonna repeat that again, trimming it down to size, making sure that that piece will fit and apply hot glue right on top of our previous piece and on the side piece. So now all we have to do is the bottom piece, again, making sure that piece fits nice and snug and place some hot glue on that corner and at the middle of the pane, and then apply that last piece in place the same way. And now one of our diamonds is totally complete. And now we just repeat this on the other side. Now here are both of my diamonds all into place. So we're gonna flip it over to the back and add additional hot glue at that junction where those pieces come into contact because we wanna make sure that this is very secure and in place. And now I'm just taking my Dollar Tree broom and you wanna whisk away all of those hot glue webs. Now, while we are working, it's not unusual for the wood to actually show through some of those skewers on places we missed. So we're gonna go through and touch up all of the wood pieces where the paint is actually not as thick as we'd like it. And we cut those raw edges of the bamboo. So we do wanna cover up the ends of those bamboo cuts as well so they won't show in our project. And then we're just gonna let this completely dry. Now once it is dry, you just grab your other two sets of pieces for wood and make a second window pane. Now once both of our window panes are done, we are going to add some jute string at the top to hang it. And all I have is some jute string with knots tied on each end. I'm going to take my staple gun and apply two staples at each end right before that knot. And this will create a hang loop. And you can also put a hang loop on the long side as well and check out the finished window panels all hung up and on display. Now I absolutely love how these turned out. Now I think that the wood turned out beautiful in these window panels and the skewers were the perfect Dollar Tree item to make these iron metal accents. 
And this project came together so easy and not to mention saves you a ton of money. Now these also have so much versatility and you could display them in a variety of different ways. Now one of my favorite ways to display them is horizontally and I think this adds a great display for those empty big wall spaces. Now you could even add glass or even Dollar Tree mirrors to the back or paint them white for a farmhouse look. And how about adding a plant hook to the top to display your succulents and your greenery? There are so many possibilities with these window panels and you all have to let me know how would you decorate these in your space? Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.